episode of Swish Player Profile. I'm Sean Schultz with Brad Lake, and we're joined by Kayla Padilla, the new breakout star at USC. How are you? Good, good. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, you're you. very welcome. Uh, first question, what made you leave Penn to go to USC? What was uh, special about USC that you had to be there? Sure. So being a, at Penn and in the Ivy League specifically, we're under a little unique situation in that the Ivy Leagues don't allow uh, grad students to play in their conference. So even if I wanted to stay at Penn or not, I couldn't if I wanted to continue and use my last year of eligibility. Um, so me, along two other Ivy League transfers who ended up coming to USC as well, had to make the decision to go into the transfer portal. And I think the biggest drivers for me, firstly, academically, I mean, you it's hard to beat a school like Penn, but wanting to make a lateral move and get into a program that aligns with what I've been studying in my background. Um, two, just the opportunity to be a part of something special. And USC presents that sort of opportunity, unlike any other program, to be alongside, you know, the number one high school recruit in the country, to play mm -hmm. in a successful and established program. Um, and, you know, just as a cherry on top, it's 20 minutes away from where I grew up. So having the opportunity to come back home and play in front of my family, it checked all the boxes. Nice. And we won't tell the fans that you beat Juju on one-on-one -on -one all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Juju will not um, agree to that claim, but yeah, we'll, we'll say that. <laughs> I was wondering if you've thought about what adjustments that you may have to make to your actual, you know, playing now that you're jumping from the Ivy League over to the Pac-12? For sure. I think there's just going to be an overall adjustment in terms of the level of play. I mean, we're going from a mid-major conference to one of the best conferences, you know, in the country. So I yeah. knew that right away from the get-go that I'd be going up against bigger and better players, but I'd also be surrounded by bigger and better players as well. Um, I think just in terms of my role on the team, it's going to be quite different as well at Penn. I was the primary scorer, um, but now I think heading into this role where I can be more of a point guard and a facilitator while still kind of keeping my, keeping to my nature of, of being, you know, a scoring threat. I think that's just going to change the game a little bit for me, um, you know, in terms of what the season will look like for me on the court. So you basically get to do a little bit of Courtney Vandersloot style. Right. Good. <laughs> yes. You can score if you need to, but you're the pass. You're going to be able to pass first and facilitate more. Yeah, definitely. I think there were, you know, instances at Penn where I was the, you know, they needed me to score. Um, so, so I think being in this new situation where there are multiple threats on the floor at the same time, the the load won't always just be on me. And I think that'll in turn just provide more organic opportunities for still for me to still be a scorer, but to you know just play on a team that that knows um, that knows basketball and can just, you know, hoop. What are you going to work on most with your game? Do you think for this season, your final season? Yeah, I think like alluding to what I said earlier, um, stepping into this new role as a point guard, um, I played shooting guard most of my pen career. So it's a definitely a different wheelhouse, you know, being sort of the floor general on the court, um, understanding the playbook, you know, coming in just for the first time and, and really being able to, to master that. Uh, so I think I'm really just going to – the main focus will be on leading the team through that position um, and still, you know, not straying away from who I am, which is a score, but also leaning into that point guard role and what whatever, you know, responsibilities come with that. You know, I wanted to ask, too, with uh, what you're saying, this is a new team. you got a lot of transfers coming in, a lot of new minds coming together. How is that team chemistry going and how important in your experience is team chemistry? <laughs> Yeah, I would say so far it's going well. I think the unique opportunity for me was to finally have a summer to play with the team and, and practice with the team. For the Ivy Leagues, they give us summers off. They're not mandatory. We don't have to be on campus. So a lot of us would spend that time doing internships or just being at home. Um, so just having that extra three months to already get going with the team and kind of get understanding, you know, what the strengths and weaknesses of everyone are definitely gives me an advantage. Um, but again, it's a, it's a very diverse group in terms of a lot of transfers, a lot of new people. Um, but I think what has gelled us really well is just this really common understanding of what we want to accomplish this season. Um, and, you know, I think we know we're capable of getting super far into the tournament with the roster that we have. Uh, so I think that just underlying understanding of what our goals are has really 
been able to to bond us together in a really quick manner. Do you know that you have a very special website called the sidelinepost.com where you kind of focus on the players off the court? Did you want to speak a little about that? Yeah, sure. So uh, thank you for asking about this, by the way. I love talking about the sideline post whenever I can. Um, so this started in April of 2020. It's basically a college replica of the Players' Tribune, which I'm sure both of you know. Um, so at Penn, when I was kind of ideating this platform, I realized there was no real concrete place for a player like me at the time who was, you know, at a mid-major conference, not exactly an A-list athlete. Like, what if I wanted to share my story? Um, you know, Sabrina Ionescu could probably get onto the Players' Tribune, but I knew I probably couldn't. Um, and I realized that there was no place to do that. So um, having been sent home due to the pandemic in April of 2020, finally had the time to put it all together. Um, and it's been one of the most rewarding things I've been able to do, just being able to share the stories of different college athletes. And the greatest part of it all is that it's through their own words and um, not, you know, not a publication or something of that sort. So it's very organic. Um, and I've been able to meet so many great people and share so many great stories. So it's something I plan to continue to run throughout the season. And um, I think it just really opens audiences eyes to that. You know, we're so much more than just athletes, the, the stats and the points we score. We have real unique stories. And that's what our platform uh, aims to shed light on. Sounds a lot like the uh, why we started to do this. We wanted to show the human side. and For sure off the court and not just the same regurgitation of stats. Yeah, totally. What about your teammates? How about best singer? Oh my gosh. Best singer. I, that's a hard one. I can definitely give you best dancer, but um, best okay. singer, I'll give you best dancer. Cause I mean, I, I'm not really sure I can narrow down who the best singer is yet, but best dancer is definitely AG or Leah Gales. Um, we had just had our, our hoop LA thing last Thursday and she like was basically putting on her own dance show and had the crowd going. Um, but yeah, no, she definitely takes the, takes the cake in that category. Uh, who about, how about the funniest? Funniest man. Our, our team is, is full of characters. Um, I would say definitely, I think Taylor Bigby gives a, a lot of laughs and Raya Marshall too. Everyone's pretty funny in their own way. Everyone has their own really unique personality, but I'd say them too. Excellent. Uh, before I throw it back to Brad, who's been your biggest basketball influence and who's your biggest influence off the court? Sure. Uh, I would say my biggest basketball influence thus far has been my high school coach, um, Noel Quinn, who's now actually the head coach of the Seattle Storm. Um, you know, not a lot of people get to say that they – had Noel Quinn, someone of her caliber and status as their high school coach. And she's been a great mentor to me, you know, both on the court and off the court with the success she's had and so many lessons she's been able to pass on. Um, it's funny because when we first met in my sophomore year of high school, we actually played one-on-one -on -one every single day after practice. Um, so she got me better and she was really invested in my growth and development and, and still is to this day. So I credit a lot of um, what I do to her. And she's a reason why I wear number 45. I mean, I had to ask her permission because I know she went to UCLA and I'd be repping the 45 at the rival school, but she was more than happy to, to give me her blessing. Um, but off the court, I would just say it's my family. Um, they've done and sacrificed so much for me to be in this position. Um, you know, playing at an Ivy league school doesn't come easy with no full ride scholarships. Um, so they really had to make a lot of sacrifice for me to, to get that opportunity. So being here at USC where I sort of have this ultimate student athlete experience and for them to be able to come and, and see games for up close for the last year of me playing uh, will be nice and, and just a way to honor everything they've done for me. So um, yeah, I can't say enough about the support from my parents. If there was just one day where you had zero basketball, zero school, what would that day be like? Like how would you just spend your free time? Sure. That's a great question. Um, again, I'm a big just family person. So I'd, I'd love to spend a lot of that day with my family. Um, I'm not too, I, I live not too far away from campus. I'm from Torrance. Um, there's a lot of good places to eat around there. Um, but if, if uh, you know, there's no limitations to what this day can consist of. I'm a, again, like you no. were talking about earlier, I'm a big music person and not a lot of people would expect this from me, but I'm like, 
I think the biggest 22 year old Bruce Springsteen fan there is to exist. Um, so if I could see a concert from the boss, that would be a, that would, that'd be the best day of my life. I mean, I, ha- I actually went to see him in concert for the first time this past April, but I'd see him a hundred times again if I could. How was that? It was amazing. I saw him in, uh, in Baltimore and Long Island when I was still at Penn. Um, and it was my first time seeing him. So um, it was electric. I loved it. Nice. Um, one thing I also wanted to ask you as a Filipina, how important is your culture to you and how important is it for you to be kind of a role model since there's not a lot of uh, Filipina and Filipino representation in college sports or in sports in general? For there's sure. Little- yeah, no, it's super important to me. I think just in general, honoring my culture, there's a lot of sort of pillars from what I learned of, of being, in terms of being Filipino, just all about being all about family and all about hard work. So I like to carry that into whatever I do, whether it be, you know, on the basketball court or just in the community. Um, but like you said earlier, there's not a lot of Filipino representation. So, um, you know, the stakes are a bit higher to be sort of that role model. Um, you know, just thinking about every time I'm out there that there was a younger version of myself looking for someone like me playing at the D1 level. Um, so you, you never know, you know, where your impact um, can go towards, uh, so just keeping that in mind and, and never really looking at it as pressure, but just more as an opportunity to be a great representation of a culture that I think is so deserving, you know, to be on this platform. I think, you know, Asian Americans in general are really overlooked in this sort of college basketball recruiting process. So to be able to show that, you know, we don't only belong, but we can really succeed and do some damage on this on this level of competition. Um, you know, it's at the forefront of my mind every time, you know, I, I put my shoes on and, and you know head on the court. What's your advice to that little girl who's in the stands watching you? But I would just say keep going. I think a lot of people underestimate, you know, the, the level of academics that go into like play in terms of recruiting as well. Um, I not for a second regret my experience at Penn and I don't think I would have been able to, to have gotten there if I wasn't a good student. So I think just a reminder that, you know, being good on the basketball floor is, you know, not enough. You also need to be good on the class in the classroom as well. Um, but I think, yeah, no, just this element of embracing who you are and never wanting to be someone else. So embracing your culture, embracing your identity, I think is super huge and important for, you know, literal goals to remember when you don't exactly see a lot of people who look like you on the stage you want to be at. So learning to embrace that and, and everything who you are. What is your go-to DoorDash or Uber Eats? <laughs> These are some great questions. Um, my favorite or my go-to DoorDash, Uber Eats, I'm a big ramen fan. Um, no particular place, but I'm, I love like Japanese food, whether it be like sushi or ramen. So I'd have to say like on any given day, I'd, I'd take up a, a DoorDash order for ramen. Nice. Now I'm going to order some. Thank you. Yes. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, Brad, I'll send you some. <laughs> um, let's wrap up with what is a fun fact. It could be a fact, a story, a trade, something about you that fans may not realize. Sure. So I already, I already gave away my Bruce Springsteen fandom. I feel like that's one of the most unique things about me, but um, let's see. I will say uh, again, like I'm a huge family person. I, I actually have two younger twin sisters that are um, now 10 years old. Not a lot of people know that about me, but there's a huge age difference. Um, and it's funny because none of them, neither of them have any want anything to do with basketball, <laughs> um, which I think is to the delight of my parents, you know, having spent so many years, you know, traveling and watching basketball games it's fun for them to take up something different um so i think that's just a little fun thing that i have uh two younger sisters so it's a family of girls so my dad is a, a certified girl dad which he loves girl dads <laughs> are the best trust yes. me <laughs> yeah. excellent um let's wrap it up there and let you go we appreciate your time kayla and thank you for being with us and uh heck i'll give it away we are at a uh, swish usc fans so let's go yes definitely kick ass let's go episode. will do no thank you guys for having me i'm looking forward to to seeing the, the episode so appreciate yes, it yes ma'am we'll have it out and uh i'll get you a copy early but we'll have it okay out soon. sounds good thank you again thank you guys have a good weekend